I'm glad that we're having this hearing. I think it's really important. I, I, you know, I, I, I look at uh, when I first, I'm a freshman, and when, when we're running, we talk to people in our districts about what they face, and they are seeing 40-year uh, high inflation. They're seeing uh, gas prices are up, grocery prices are through the roof, pantries uh, staples such as eggs, butter, milk, chicken um, are, have skyrocketed. And what's even worse, I think, is that you know, in, in a district that I represent that is home to 163,000 retired seniors, one in six seniors uh, in America are considering returning to work because they can no longer afford the rising cost of living I think about that. I think about the the uh, middle-income Americans uh, on fixed incomes. I think about seniors who are on fixed incomes. Um, Dr. Holtz-Eakin, you previously testified in February of 2021 that the American Rescue Plan injected too large of a stimulus into the American economy. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, Certainly. Um, The the bill when proposed came at a time when the, the weekly and monthly data that we received suggests the economy is growing quite rapidly. Uh, a good summary of this is something produced by the Atlanta Fed known as GDP Now, which sort of gives you an estimate of what the current growth rate is in the quarter for uh, for GDP. And it was at 6.5%. So th- this was not the same as March of 2020 when the economy was falling at a rate that ultimately contracted by nearly full, 10 full percentage points in a single quarter. It was extraordinary. So we're in a completely different situation. We're growing quite rapidly. And we're getting close to full employment. We're getting close to potential GDP, and there's there's no reason to have a, a nearly two trillion dollar stimulus. It's way too big for whatever problem you might have imagined remained. And so, it was going to be a big macroeconomic error. Do you still, two years later, maintain that same assessment that that the American Rescue Plan overstimulated the the original assessment to now that that has changed in that? Oh, yes. Um, I I got one piece badly wrong. Um, I thought the biggest fallout would be to repeat what we had seen in 2020. We passed the CARES Act, $2.5 trillion of spending, and in May of of 2020, the U.S. savings rate went to 33%. Now, that's positively un-American. We do not save uh, a third of every dollar. And um, and, and that then flowed into asset classes. And we saw broadly equities were up, housing was up. That's when crypto first became a big deal. Every asset class got inflated. Saw the same phenomenon after the December uh, 2020 $900 billion um, stimulus. Um, and so I was afraid on the heels of that, we've, all of this money would flow into asset price inflation. The Fed would take a look at a whole bunch of asset bubbles and have to just pull the, the plug on them, raise rates sharply, and we'd have a recession in the immediate aftermath of a terrible pandemic downturn. I, I thought that was, that, that was sort of lining up to do that. I was wrong because the economy opened up at roughly the same time, the vaccines came online, and the, the money came out of the asset classes and into consumer purchases, and it became consumer price inflation instead. Do you think that the Inflation Reduction Act, in fact, reduced inflation? No single act reduces inflation. Its contribution was minimal at best. It was $300 billion in deficit reduction backloaded, so it's, it was going to be five years off, and we hope the Fed has um, got us at 2% before, well before that. At the same time, the Inflation Reduction Act was being considered, Congress passed the Chips and Science Act, $300 billion of pure deficit finance uh, spending, the PATH Act, up to $600 billion by CEO's estimate of pure deficit finance spending. So it is the, the cumulative um, spending and tax decisions by the Congress that matter for inflation, and, and in 2022, it continued to produce inflationary pressures. So will, will the subsidies, you're testifying, your testimony is that the subsidies included in those packages increase those inflationary pressures? Yeah, they, they pale in comparison to doing $2 trillion in a month, but they, they are of the same type. Right, but all three of those collectively, and, and even individually, cause that inflationary pressure. Continued, no question. 